painting I'm working on today is on an 11 by 14 linen panel by Centurion. Linen is my favorite surface to work on as I really love how it grips the paint. As with all of my studio paintings, I have a solid drawing on the panel, which I then cover with a layer of spray fixative so that it doesn't wash away as I lay down the paint. Then I tone the entire surface with the scumbling of raw umber. As a general rule, no matter what subject I'm painting, I tend to work background to foreground. I do this for several reasons, but mainly because it allows me to evaluate everything as best as possible throughout the process. It lets me stay in my desired range from light to dark and develop a sense of depth as things come forward in the painting. A note on the design I chose for the background. It's not something I came up with on the fly. On my reference, I did a digital paint over to create a design that I felt would accentuate the figure. For my Patreon subscribers, I provide a layered PSD file for Photoshop to see how I developed that design. For this painting in particular, I tried to come up with a broken color texture for the background and the shape behind it is merely a tool to try and draw attention to the face. It's not anything specific necessarily. As I'm blocking in at this stage, I'm not getting fastidious with any details. I'm just trying to get the whole surface covered as logically as I can. The first things that I've blocked in on the figure are the darkest passages, those being her dress, her jacket, dreadlocks and eye makeup. Filling all of these areas in first is going to inform me how to paint the face, insofar as I have already established a three value range in the painting of a mid-tone in the background, a light in the circle behind her head, and the rich darks of her hair and the clothes. Having this set up will immediately tell me if I lay down a value that is off in the face. As I move into the face, whilst I'm not getting hung up on detail, I still want to be somewhat precise. The painting is completed in several layers, and each one is done with the intention of informing the next and making it even better. At this stage, the distinction between drawing and painting becomes much more blurred. I don't really think of the two as mutually exclusive. Right now, I'm essentially taking something that is all line work and filling it with shape. Where once there were lines and boundaries, there are now shapes and edges, both soft and hard. Whilst I can see a lot of complexity in colour on the face of my reference, for this first layer, my goal is to simplify that into three distinct values. Moving from left to right, she has a cool, dark tone on the shadow side. Down the middle of her face, is a warmish neutral violet where some of the warm light is bouncing back into the shadow. Then on her right side we start to see warm peachy colours and a hot highlight where the light is hitting her face. Now I'm using terms like warm and cool, however they aren't inert. Colour and temperature are relative to the context they're in. All of the bluish violet greys I'm using on the shadow side of her face probably look out of place until the context of the light is put in. I also feel like once I lay in the lips, they act as a keystone to relate all of the colors together. Moving into her hair, we've got this wonderful pop of blue amongst all the dreadlocks. 
In my reference, it's much more of an emerald green, but I didn't want to introduce that color and felt that the blue was more complementary to the whole color scheme. And as I've already used it to mix the grays in the background, I felt it a better choice to harmonize the painting, whilst also a nice point of contrast to draw attention to the face. The hands are more of a secondary focal point, and whilst I don't want your full attention on them, I want them to have enough value and color contrast to distinguish them from the background. Once everything on the painting is dry, we're going to repeat the process all over again, from working background to foreground. I wanted to get a bit more boldness in the background with some thicker brush strokes in the second pass, but still keeping the concept of that initial broken color design. This second stage of the face, I really am going for refinement. I am in fact repainting the entire face and using that first pass as a base guide to bring out the clarity at this stage. I'm using a double zero round brush and laying down very small tiles of paint and blending them next to each other. Something I do want to address at this stage is the challenge of painting a face at this scale. When the face is only about as big as a golf ball, a brush stroke off the mark can derail a likeness. Truly, painting something like this larger would make it much easier. But sometimes, I enjoy smaller paintings. And this is almost training for something larger. If I ever want to do a large narrative with multiple figures, unless the painting is several feet long and a couple of feet wide, I'm not really going to be painting faces that are much larger than the palm of my hand. In an ideal world, the way I'd like to see my paintings come together is akin to how a traditional photograph develops. An image in a tub of fluid that, as a whole, gradually comes into focus. Something I'm really focusing on at this stage are my edges and transitions. I'm being very conscious of when the crisper edge of a car shadow begins to soften and merge with the roundness of a form. For instance, right here on her forehead and on the cheekbones. I will say that something that was glaring at me for some time was how in the first pass, I got the placement of the pupil in her left eye too close to the center. But that's okay, mistakes happen, and it's really only a mistake if you don't fix it. Soon you'll see that pupil start to migrate over to its proper position. Here I'm working on the most crucial transition in the whole painting, where the light begins to fall into shadow. These areas are always a challenge for me, as you have to find a way to subtly bridge these two contrasting color groups without it looking muddy and overly blended. It also happens to be going almost straight down the middle of her dominant eye on the right, almost a focal point within the focal point. That first layer of paint we laid down, whilst it hinted at form and a few planes of the face, it was mostly a flat baseline of color. Whereas at this stage, I am doing my best to focus on the roundness of forms and a sense of three dimensionality. For instance, under her lip and the cheek of the shadow side, I'm painting some warmish mid-tone violets to show the light that is bouncing back up into that shadow. This is the real pick and shovel stage of the painting where the bulk of the work is done. That first stage was a foundation. Then finally, we'll move into making some slight adjustments for things that weren't quite achieved 
in the main painting stage. Moving into the hairline, I'm going all the way around it, making a very soft edge. Unlike myself, if you're fortunate enough to have a full head of hair, you still won't have a hard ridged hairline. It will still be a soft and subtle transition. The lips I personally find are one of the more difficult parts of the face. They are these two distinct soft forms that roll in and out of the face that on the top and bottom have a very clear edge, but if it's too hard, will look like a pair of plasticky wax candy lips. Regardless of whether or not your subject is wearing lipstick, it's something one needs to really pay attention to. And even if they are, and it's part of the makeup you're trying to capture on the face, it requires delicacy. Particularly the corner of the mouth, where it gets quite dark in the crevice. If at all possible, I feel it's better to understate than overemphasize something like that. Something that might sound odd is that I don't really think in terms of details, it's more a matter of layering in refinement or adding information. When I was learning to paint, still am learning to paint, but you know, those preliminary years, detail was almost like a dirty word. Getting hung up on details could lead to losing the greater scheme of the picture. In fact, I wouldn't even know how to define what the details in this painting are. Are they the finesse transitions of the flesh tones that I mentioned earlier? Are they the shiny bits of the highlights on the metal of her jewellery? Maybe you can share your thoughts on that in the comments down below. If it's any of those things, it's where you really need to practice and patience and wait as long as possible before you hit those extremes of value. Everything else needs to be set up for that last layer of information to be laid down. Now here, as I refine her dreadlocks, is where we can see the payoff for being as procedural as possible. By repeatedly going from background to foreground, it allows me to paint into areas before they're refined to get that definite feeling of depth and overlap. What can happen when you paint two things right next to each other, the subject that is coming forward can develop a halo around it. I feel it's better to paint into that subject, maybe let it dry, then paint back over it to get that clean feeling of overlap. Now a note on painting hair, notice how I'm trying to identify large clumps and masses to group together to give the feeling of a full head of hair. I'm not painting individual hairs. And even if I were to do that on a painting at this scale, I'd have to use something like a one hair brush and that's just not what I'm into. It's usually my preference to indicate and give the effect of something rather than fully detail it whenever possible. I'm now making a few alterations to the background. I feel as though I had tightened up too much and it was looking a little stiff, so I wanted to loosen up some edges. Now if you're enjoying this video, please remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel to really help it grow. Once I've done that, I feel comfortable going in and refining the jacket. And I can start that by re-establishing the silhouette of the jacket by painting over those brush strokes from the background. In dealing with these big lapels with the metal studs, there's no one way to go about it. I started them off by scrubbing in a transparent dark tone over the top. Uh, this gives me some base value, but still allows me to see the drawing. I've already taken the time to draw in all those studs I don't want to lose them and count them out again with paint. 
So contrary to what I said earlier, whilst I can see the drawing, I am going to fill them in and then paint around them. In areas like this, there's a bit of back and forth. I will lose them a little bit as I paint the leather, but at least there will be some bright mark as an indication and guide so that I can re-establish them. As I move into something like the zipper of a jacket, especially on a painting at this scale, it's where I really favor indication or giving the impression of something rather than complete detail. A zipper is made up of hundreds of tiny little metal teeth and I don't want to paint them all. Why? Because life is too short and I cherish my sanity. Instead, I want to try to just indicate the effect that something shiny like a zipper will have on your eye when viewed as a whole. This is similar with how I address the folds on a jacket down the arm. First, I establish two values of a light side and a shadow side. Then with a size four round brush, I lay in the basic dark triangular shapes of the zigzag fold running down the arm. Now, even though I'm following my reference, I am editing out a number of the folds and putting in just enough to sell the jacket and make it believable. Now I'm taking a slightly brighter mix and painting where the light is hitting the top sides of the folds. Lastly, I'm mixing a mid-tone to paint the light that is reflecting back into the dark crevices of those folds. Now I'm going in for a third and final pass on the face and I'll be using a combination of glazing and scumbling to make some slight adjustments. Glazing is a technique where you use a transparent pigment thinned with just a little medium like Winsor Newton Liquid Original, and you can darken and enrich an area without destroying all the work underneath it. I'm doing that here to try and knock down the value of the whites of the eye, as I felt that they were a little too bright and punchy. I'm also using it to accentuate the form of her eye socket. I felt that where the socket connected to the brow ridge and the forehead, it had become too flat and lost the form. I'm being very conscious to try and color match the areas that I like so that I have something to paint back into. And by scumbling the paint into an area that I already like, it will make a somewhat seamless transition. And again, doing a bit of finesse on her eye on the left hand side. Now I really want to push the contrast and hit the highlights, particularly on her brow ridge and around her hairline. I'm using a combination of Kremnitz or lead white and a little bit of Vermilion Extra and Naples Yellow Deep. I do want to say that I never use pure white, whether it's titanium or lead base. I always want a hint of warmth or coolness in a highlight, depending on the light source. Using pure white straight out of the tube will look like white paint on your subject. Ideally, you want it to look like the highest value of whatever the local color of the subject is. Even if it was a highlight on something incredibly reflective like water or metal, I'm going to mix a hint of something in there to harmonize it with the material. Something I'm doing here to emphasize that dominant highlight is adding a hint of saturation as a slight halo effect. It really helps that highlight to glow as the light drops off and immediately falls into shadow.
I still wasn't quite happy with that crucial transition where the light falls into shadow down the side of her face, so I'm going to do a, a soft scumble of violet to gradiate that transition. At this point of the painting, the bulk of the work is done and I'm genuinely looking for problems. It's also where things really slow down. In the beginning, everything needs doing, but as we get into these refinement stages, I'm really digging into my reservoir of patience to spot the tweaks that need to be made and take the time to do them. I'm trying to be as careful as I can, because at this point, I really don't want to make any mistakes. If I do, it's not the end of the world, nobody dies. I can either leave it alone, let it dry, then paint over it, or I can try and wipe it away and relay down the paint. Then, once I'm happy with the portrait and all the flesh tones, I get some real payoff with final touches of her makeup and jewellery. It was both stressful and very satisfying to paint these three tiny dots as a decorative element to her makeup. Then with the jewellery of her nose ring and lip stud, these are tiny shapes that I'm going to indicate with three values. First, I lay down a mid-tone grey for the shapes of each item, then a dark tone to hint at some roundness and shadow side, and then pop a few tiny highlights, and that will be just enough information to sell the jewellery for this painting. As I lay these highlights down, I'm trying to be very careful. I don't want the, the paint to blend in with the surface. I really want to just deposit these touches of highlight on top of all of the layers. Then with the final graphic on her t-shirt, the painting comes to a close. And with the common problem of how do you know when a painting is done, it's when nothing else is bothering me, or at least bothering me enough that I care to change it. I've said what I wanted to say, and it's time to move on to the next one. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today and got some useful advice on painting the clothes figure. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I have more videos if you'd like to carry on watching. Down below you'll find links to my Instagram, Patreon for exclusive content, and my website. Thank you so much everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.